can take you in hot, or I can take you in cold. Cold it is, mother f Okay, people, welcome back to another Who Play Day. God dang, I love these things. At this point, you guys know I love customs. I love making them. Oh, well, my time may be passed for that aspect of the hobby since, you know, my eyesight is going and I'm getting old and, oh, shaky, uh, trying to paint an eyeball. So these days, I mostly scour the internet, eBay, Etsy, Instagram, Facebook, wherever people may be selling their work. And when something catches my eye, I'm just like, oh... <sighs> I need that. How much? Or sometimes people just hit me up. Or sometimes I just go to the P.O. box and there's a package. I have no clue what's in it and <laughs> it's always awesome. Not knowing what's in it and then you open it and it's like, holy shit. So let's go through these one by one. I already feel like I'm spoiling the video for you, but all the links are in the description. If you want to check out any of these artists, just click the link. Go over. See what's happening. Starting off with a bit of randomness that may help out if you're needing female bodies for customizing. This is the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Rita Repulsa. I don't collect Power Rangers, so I didn't need that set, especially since I already had a Lord Zed. When I saw this on eBay exactly like this for about seven bucks, I thought, well, that could be interesting. Let's see what happens. And I just got it in this week. There's a ball joint up at the top. There's a hinge at the abs. Butterfly shoulders. Essentially all the articulation <laughs> that we would want in a Star Wars or a Marvel Legends figure. I love that the boot tops are sculpted in for a high boot, especially since my first thought when I saw this was, hey, do I need to make an Aura Sing? But with the rumor mill going that Hasbro's gonna make one in the Black series, I'm gonna hold off for a bit. Hopefully they make the red costume and I can make the Clone Wars black costume out of this. You know, when I finally finish a custom. It's pretty good size. Well, Leia's terrible comparison, isn't she? That'll work for a bounty hunter type in the Star Wars universe, but then it's not bad compared to an MCU Marvel Legends figure either. Hopefully someday this body will be somebody. I finally got off my butt and ordered one of these things. This is the Damn Toys Freeze Man. And they've done several different versions of this body. The, the crash test dummy, uh, other things remember off the top of my head. They're all based on this body though. And while I usually don't care for the translucent material look where you can see the joints underneath, for some reason, I don't know if it's the sheen of it, the reflectiveness, but it doesn't bother me as much here. And I'll be damned, nah, damn toys, if there isn't some range of movement to this thing. I mean, full on elbows, so much torso, so much tilt. The hips kind of throw me how it's engineered, but it works really well. I mean, I can't complain when it's functional. When you come up, there's some bulginess, but yeah. Full on knees too. Boop, 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 boop. Kicks his eyes, yeah. Toe joints. It was all smooth right out of the package too. I thought maybe I would have some stuck joints or something, but everything is just fluid. Frozen fluid. Are you getting sick of these jokes? Yeah. Half of me thought I could maybe do another Iceman for the display but this is a bit small for Marvel Legends. Although it may work for early X-Men teenage Bobby with that kind of snowman look when he went from snow to ice, I don't know, it's useful. There's also a ghost-like quality to it because of the soft facial features. <laughs> I kind of freaked myself out. I'm a couple of years late with this Hasbro Into the Spider-Verse splitter, but after the recent Marvel Legends Into the Spider-Verse wave where we got most of the characters from the movie, I had to get this. Plus it didn't hurt that it's down to $17 on Amazon. 17, 18, something like that. Penny that comes with it is way too small, but as a background character, even with, well, I was gonna say limited articulation, it's essentially just hip and shoulder. Even then, as a background piece, just to be hanging out behind these other characters, it's well worth the $18 that I paid for it. Getting into some custom stuff, Oh, my favorite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Last play day, I showed off this custom Bandai model kit R5P8 from Greedo737. Since then, I got the blaster to go on the head. This is a cast from Pit817 on eBay. It came in a resin color, so I actually painted it up. <laughs> did a silver dry brush just real quick and dirty and then glued it to the top of the head. But now that I have it glued, I kind of wish I went a different route with it, especially when I look right down here on my desk and I have this peg top thing. I could have cut a slot in it, 
drilled a hole in the head and then I could have had it rotate on top of there. A little bit more posability to it. But as is, it adds a lot to the figure because I don't have any other R5 units running around with a blaster strapped to the top of his head. And we should have more R5 units running around with blasters strapped to the top of their heads. Right? Pew, 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 pew. Jaden Mendiola on Facebook hit me up one day and said, Hey, would you be interested in taking a look at my Cosmic Demon upgrade kit for Doc Knock? And I said what I always say. Hell yeah. He's taken one of the Mesco skulls, made it a bit more scary, purple paint job, cross on the forehead, some deep burning eyes down there it's looking into your soul then he also has this retro 90s looking blaster he actually sent two still a great look but i like the little missile things here on top or the scope or whatever the hell those things are it changes up the look of my doc nocturnal just enough makes it a bit more sinister the head is big but like i've always said about this character it looks like he's wearing some kind of helmet with a skull face on it plus it's a smaller body and while we don't have a robin from 112 collective yet on this body that's just silly mezco I'll save your soul. Last play day, I showed off the Jabba trophy wall I got from Spaceport 77 Studios on eBay. This play day, I got a gonk droid from them, and I love the sculpt of this. It's not articulated, which is okay because it's gonna be standing on my shelf just gonk, 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 gonk. I was going more for the details and the paint job and something I could just buy on eBay without having to put any work into it because I'm a lazy ass. The dryer duct look to the legs, the feet down here. There's even some paint right there with the colors. Cables running up to the bottom and uh, this is just a fantastic shelf piece but that's not all because he also added in an at ease jawa just relaxing after a hard day of scavenging or stealing or you know what jawas do i love the torn edges of the robe it's got the wrench he has his pouches even silver buttons painted you guys know that's my big thing you gotta have those buttons painted and then the yellow eyes peering out from under the hood and it works perfectly with the star wars black series jawa and there's the gonk in there they're just hey about to sell some stuff is it our stuff hell no we stole this stuff i mean what we it's totally ours Houdini! here's a complete surprise piece that showed up from fedex like 10 minutes before i started shooting you may know matt o'toole he does a lot of mythic legions customs he did the castle of power back in the day with the, the bigger version of castle grayskull to go behind your masters of the universe classics and he's still chugging along on the customs just a great look to this it's damn accurate to what we saw in the show the side looks to be reused from the black series han and carbonite same controls but he's come in did some paint work silvered it up green same thing on the other side nice detail just all around get around to the bottom there it is again and it still has the two indents for a stand from black series even though the back is hollow you can see that's not touching the grooves go in there far enough to where it holds and stands without much problem i never realized how enterprise that looks oh, kind of but to have something else to add to my mandalorian shelf yeah I take that all day, every day, so I appreciate it, Matt. Another surprise I got in the P.O. box is this custom Christopher Reeve Superman. And this comes from John with Geek Summit. His site hasn't been updated in a while, but it looks like he's been doing updates on his YouTube channel. And he says, once the world went into lockdown, I found myself quickly overcoming my intimidation of working with fabric because he doesn't sew. And this figure still came to be with no sewing. And... I, I, I don't know how that works. The shape of this is so accurate, and I'm not sure what body is underneath because I don't know what a Mezco figure looks like without the clothing on, but there almost seems to be, well, at least in the chest, he's added some padding to give it that Christopher Reeve look, and it retains full articulation. I watched the video on the boots, and somehow he puts this material down and then irons it out, and it forms to the foot or the leg have the yellow s on the back there is wire running into the cape you can pose it and that's some stiff wire it holds the weight really well but also when i get the wire put down there's still some flow to the cape with this other material sticking out and this is how he's going to be on the shelf doing that looking up in the air that hopeful look that you get when you look at christopher reeve superman plus he drew a Robo logo for me <laughs> and me as a superhero in silhouette. I get some crazy stuff in the P.O. box and I, I cannot express my appreciation whenever somebody just sends a package and I open it up and yeah, 
so good. One of the mainstays of Playday is Casting Cave. I hit Corey's site several times a week, and when something pops up, I order it because I know it's good. I, I know what to expect. So recently, I snagged this replacement Marvel Legends Psylocke head, and we all know what the original head looked like. It's okay, but... It's not this. This is just an overall better look for Betsy. And while the ninja look may not be my favorite, this makes me happy to have this on the shelf. But not only that, you know I had to sneak some Star Wars in too, and <laughs> this is what I mostly look for, is replacement heads for Star Wars figures, or heads for new characters. I love the look of this Duros head, the dry brush, to bring out the details of the sculpt, the reflective candy red in the eyes, the line going across it, it's just so good. But I haven't found a permanent place for this head yet. I'm eventually gonna do a Shriv from Battlefront 2, but for now, he can be displayed as just a random Battlefront 2 soldier. There was a Duros option for Battlefront 2, wasn't there? It's been a while. So yeah, huge upgrade here and another character for the Star Wars shelf. <laughs> Once again, Casting Cave, I couldn't be happier. It's been a while since I've featured Jay Custom Figures on Instagram. He does a lot of Trooper Customs. A lot of Trooper Customs. But I guess he had some leftover stuff, some extras, and he sent me a big old box starting with this Battlefront 2 First Order squad. Have an officer and a jet trooper, and that actually has a jet on the back. Have a sniper with the black pauldron. There's a flame trooper, a normal trooper, and a heavy trooper. Now he calls this a jungle swamp squad, and you can see the dirtiness and the damage. That's what I love about Jay. He just goes all out with the damage, and it ends up looking great. But you'll also notice the mud caked onto the legs like they've been going through the swamps. And it's not just paint. That's an actual texture. I, well, I'm almost afraid to ask what that is. But all said and done, a whole squad in one fell swoop. My yard has been wet for a while. Perfect picture-taking opportunity here. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. Jay also sent this custom-made symbiote Spider-Man design that he came up with himself. It's close to the original design, but damn, the paintwork here, that is some crisp lines. And then the stripes running up and down the side. I am jealous because... It's been years. Well, hell, even in my prime, I don't think I could paint lines that straight. And while I already love the black and white color scheme of any of the symbiotes, this beefier design, this really works for me. I hadn't even flipped it over. I didn't realize there was white lines running on the inside of the arms. And then another very, very nicely painted spider symbol on the back. It's just a cool tweak to a classic design. He also sent along this custom painted R2 unit. Now this is the Black Series version. It's smaller. It's not my favorite sculpt, but as badass looking as this is, I can put this somewhere. And he says it's a knockoff, so the leg doesn't really and the head doesn't turn. Then it's Star Wars. I'll find use for it. He also sent a clone communication officer has that, well, that clone look to the face. I think this is a First Order officer, but he's added some seam lines coming across the old Imperial cog. It looks easy, or Jay makes it look easy, but it's very effective. It's gonna stick out on the shelf. He also put in a custom Mandalorian Remnant Stormtrooper. This is off the new Stormtrooper body, and in his note he says, I know one's coming, but did it anyway. And I love it because it is so different from the Target exclusive Remnant Trooper we got. In fact, I much prefer the custom paint job. I still like this, but you get a couple of these, they're all gonna look the same. You get a custom paint job and it's just, oh, so good, so good. Plus I love that new Stormtrooper body. I know some people have their problems with it, but nah. I love the silhouetted cuts. Still working through Jay's box, here is a custom injured Obi-Wan. Got some blood on the knuckles, some dirtiness to his robes and tunic. There's even a slash right there. And even though this uses that Black Series head, which is a bit tiny, I like the bruising and the blood he added to it. But I think the injured Obi-Wan goes with his custom dirge. And I'll be honest, I'm not really familiar with dirge. I didn't see those original Clone Wars episodes, but I've seen pictures. And this being a big armored guy with some kind of underneath, uh, yeah, this totally works for me. I can't even tell you what body he used. But again, Jay with the battle damage, always a treat to look at. Oh, and that hole goes all the way through. In fact, is that big enough for, oh, yep. That's big enough for a lightsaber to go through. But the paintwork on the skull and the design on the shoulder pads, <laughs> this makes me want to go find out more about Dirge because that's what good action figures do. And good customs do that even more because somebody liked the design or the character enough to put some elbow grease into it. So it makes me think, oh, 
then it's worth it. I need to find out more. And then to finish off Jay's box, there is this. His note said to open this last, and I messaged him and he was like, <laughs> he bought a lot off eBay and this was included. So he's passing along this evil looking thing. And now my house is full of demons. <laughs> Sometimes when a toy company won't give you what you want, you just gotta go out and make it yourself. Sculpt it yourself, 3D print it. And that's what JB Customs on Instagram did. So when he hit me up and offered me one, I thought, I'm gonna need that for my display because look at this big Hulk and monster. I mean, it's not huge, but it's intimidating. Now this is completely 3D printed, so there is some looseness here and there, but at the same time, there is more posability than I thought there would be. That's probably more ball joint than Hasbro would give us. Some knee and some ankle or some elbow too. Some shoulder to come up for some shooting action. All the details and then the rugged paint job on top of that. It just, this totally works for me. And like I said, there may be a little looseness, but I haven't had a problem whatsoever of getting them to stand up. But not only that, I got a commando droid from them too. Same thing here. It's completely 3D printed. He put a paint job on top of that and it just works for what I was wanting. More droid army that's not just battle droids. I included some alternate hands, some open hands, some grip hands, but this right here, this is what I want. One knife holding hand and one blaster holding hand. Again, there is some articulation. You can get some poses out of it. I don't want to go tweaking on it too hard because it's completely fabricated. But bottom line for me is getting new characters on the shelf. And in that aspect, this is, complete win. There's even some head movement. Huh. I didn't, I'm finding new stuff as I go. And then finally, I made this Darth Maul a long time ago. It's a superior Spider-Man upper torso with, uh, oh, what's that Hasbro line where the things all plug in? Mashers. Is that what it was called? But I took the robot legs off that, matched it up with that body, and Jay sent along a new head for that. I was using a Black Series Maul head, but this one seems to fit the, the anger a bit more, the animated feel. Plus it's got pointy spikes. The red is a little darker, but that just pushes me to finally repaint this body. I never felt like I did a great job at it, and then I never actually finished. That hand is unpainted. I don't know why I painted this one and didn't paint that one. And then finally, I got a surprise package from my buddy, Mike Lorenzo. Back when conventions used to be a thing, I met Mike, it was several years ago, and then we ran into each other at cons all across the country. We'd hang out, we'd talk toys. And recently he double checked my address and said, I have a package in the mail. And again, not having a clue what it is when I opened this up, oh man, I have wanted one of these forever or a month somewhere in there, you know, since it was revealed at, on The Mandalorian Season 2. This is Boba Fett after he got his armor back, cleaned it up a bit, and it's the cleanest we've seen Boba in a while. And from looking at it, what it essentially is, is a Darth Nihilus from the waist down with the model kit knee pads on it, and then a model kit Boba Fett up top. And Mike even added some sculpt on the sides just to add a little more girth to it. I'd been on the edge of taking my extra Boba Fett model kit and doing something like this, but... I couldn't match Mike's work here. Just a nice clean paint job. That look from the show, I, I couldn't be happier. Plus it's Boba Fett, plus it's Mandalorian. I get to add to that shelf again. <laughs> so at the end of the day, just another bunch of fantastic looking customs. And like I said earlier, there is no way I can express how much appreciation I have to each and every person that goes out of their way to send me something. It's just so mind blowing because I absolutely love custom work. Anything that somebody puts their elbow grease into, their time, their skill, their talent, it hits me right here and I cannot get that across. All I can do is show off their stuff to whoever wants to watch my little videos because the work that these customizers are, well, any customizers out there, they deserve to be put to the forefront, to be shown off, to be appreciated by everybody. You'll find a bunch of links down in the description. Go check them out. Even if you're not interested in buying a custom, just go look, see what's out there and give them a follow, give them a like, give them a comment of, hey, that's a great job. Keep it up because there's not enough positivity out there. All we ever hear is, oh, that sucks. That's out of scale. Uh. Let's try to be supportive and cheer these guys on because, oh, there's nothing like an individual piece standing on the shelf. I guess what I'm saying is just get out there and play and encourage others that like to play. 
That's all I'm saying. So if you enjoyed this play day, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. And the Jawa may not be an action figure, but it's, it oozes personality. It's just sitting down there just like, hey, whoo, ooh, teeny, I am tired.